Paolo Sorrentino guides the viewer through the emotional journey of Jeff Gambardella, a 65-year-old once-famous writer living in Rome. In the film's opening scene, tourists wander about, admiring the great beauty, contemporary Rome. As Sorrentino described it in the New York Times series, Anatomy of a Scene, Rome has a beauty so large that one could die from looking at it for too long, a sentiment captured by the death of a tourist who dies from heartache. The incident suggests, perhaps, that a human life may end at any time and that we are all merely passengers on a journey in which Rome, the eternal ancient city, offers a stark contrast. A woman's scream cracks open the door into a different Rome. This is the Rome of Jeff Gambardella, a wealthy and influential journalist who writes about the city's culture. Jeff has spent most of his life seducing his way through the over-the-top Roman nightlife and now seems to be enjoying his extravagant 65th birthday party with friends. However, more than 40 years after the release of his one novel, Jeff begins to wonder why he never got around to fulfill his early literary promise. As the film progresses, Jeff mentions Gustav Flaubert's wish to write a book about nothing. In one letter, Flaubert writes, What seems beautiful to me, what I should like to write, is a book about nothing, a book dependent on nothing external, which would be held together by the strength of its style, just as the earth, suspended in the void, depends on nothing external for its support, a book which would have almost no subject, or at least in which the subject would be almost invisible, if such a thing is possible. The finest works are those that contain the least matter. The closer expression comes to thought, the closer language comes to coinciding and merging with it, the finer the result. One could argue this was Sorrentino's intention with the great beauty, Jeff Gambardella's inability to look inside himself. However, when he learns that Eliza, his summer love from long ago, has died, Jeff is saddened. We realize that Jeff yearns for the past and tries to relive it. He wanders around Rome bitterly reflecting on the passions of his lost youth and grieving for that innocence. It's not until Jeff loses someone whom he truly loved, that he begins to look inward. We realize that Jep transmits all of his energy outward. His life is one of extravagant parties and self-indulgence in a materialistic world. He's the opposite of the main character Sorrentino has worked with before, and Rome, the perfect setting to allow it to happen. As Sorrentino has said before, he likes to focus on unsociable characters, those who seem a little bit tired of society, not because they are rebels, but because unsociable characters focus on themselves rather than on others. They have a natural fear of dealing with other people, but can't escape their internal conflicts either. For Sorrentino, this dilemma brings about a much more vibrant world. Sorrentino then places Jeff at parties, where he's surrounded by Rome's self-centered elites, and where these characters, including Jeff, show their true colors. This is especially the case with parties at Jeff's own penthouse, on a rooftop that reminds those familiar with the Ettore Scola of his film La Terraza, a satirical and tragic glimpse of the same Roman elites at a different time, but in a society that faces the same problems. It's at one of these parties that Stefania criticizes Jeff for not having written another book. She talks about her own political activities and writings, which Jeff downplays as vehement statements that only serve to cover her vulnerabilities. Stefania persuades Jeff to say more, and despite his reluctance, he discloses to Stefania that her husband is in love with someone else, her children are neglected, and that her didactic work has little influence, adding that rather than contempt for others, she should feel affection. Jeff carefully analyzes what Stefania considers as her accomplishments, something he's mostly incapable of doing for himself. The life of everyone in these circles is less than what they desire, and their pride is often mingled with pain. Only their determination to achieve some measure of self-discipline limits or expands their sense of compassion. Sorrentino said he wanted to make a film about finding happiness and how difficult it is to face the passing of time. We see Jeff at his own party questioning who he really is, and in what could be interpreted as a metaphor for Italy and its problems, he says, the Trenini, little trains, and in this case, party conga lines, and our parties are the best ones in Rome. They are beautiful because they go nowhere. As described by Tony Servio 
in an interview. The party conga line is much more than a metaphor for Italy under Prime Minister Berlusconi's leadership. It's a stupid and meaningless dance, the lowest point of any decadent party, that shows the lack of communication between people and where hypocrisy and fakeness rule. Jep realizes that these conga lines are a metaphor for avoiding any attempt at real human understanding, a social ritual that fits with his friends to do best, being senseless. In another scene, we find Jep at a wedding celebration. His attempts to carry on a spiritual conversation with a cardinal are only met by the cardinal's wish to discuss gourmet recipes, a pointed reflection of, counter to our expectations, how shallow people in authority can be. Later, Jep brings Ramona to a party where a little girl is splattering whole cans of paint against a large canvas and dipping her hands in the drippings while crying that she'd rather be playing with friends than serving as the adult's entertainment. Misinterpreting her frustration, the audience applauds. At the same party, Jet meets a friend who has the keys to several great museums and takes him and Ramona on a tour. Sorrentino portrays Jep as the human embodiment of Rome, with its past ruins and present decadence. Sister Maria, a nun considered a saint, visits Rome, and Jep's editor plans a dinner and an interview. The nun enjoyed Jep's novel and asks him why he didn't write another book, to which Jep responds that he was looking for the great beauty, referring perhaps to meaning of the high life his own artistic soul, his emotions, fear, existence, and true happiness. While The Great Beauty may be a film about a specific time in Italy's history, it goes beyond its political undertones. Like Fellini's La Dolce Vita, it will survive as a historical piece that shows a way to delve into a nation and its characters. The film captures a society that collectively refused to look inward. In his emotional journey, stalked by death and disillusion, Jeff starts to see past the nightclubs and parties and experiences a rebirth that allows him to appreciate the beauty of what surrounds him, especially in things that can appear as tricks of the imagination. Thank you for watching. I'd love to hear your opinions on this film, so make sure to drop a comment and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel to join us next time.